We're a research and development, textile research and development company that started 11 years ago. We used to import textiles from China and then a friend of mine who's a marine biologist was writing a book on global warming and said, what do you know about sustainable textiles? And at that stage it was very little, but he convinced me to write this chapter on, on sustainable textiles for this book. And the research totally blew my mind that you know 99% of the clothing that we wear is just discarded and it's a massive, massive loss of resources and loss of value. So we totally turned our company on, on its head from importing textiles from China to looking at what textile waste streams are out there. And living in Wellington, one of the waste streams that we see most often is coffee sacks. So we made a range of products using used coffee sacks and made um, a range of hats. And um, at the time we were working in a shared office with an American interior designer and she said, oh, Starbucks are really lovely. So we managed to leverage our way to Starbucks in the US and they hated the hats. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what they were doing, which was the silver lining, is that they were looking to use their coffee sacks within the refurbishment of their stores worldwide. So then they brought us in to work with them on product development using the Duke coffee sacks. So this is really great. We launched an upholstery fabric back in 2010. We won all these awards from Prince Charles and Kevin McLeod and a number of different people. And we were feeling really, really chuffed with ourselves as sustainable heroes. And then we saw one of Starbucks warehouses, which we hadn't been allowed into before. And the scale of it was just vast. But these warehouses, we just saw one of six. But um, they're the biggest warehouses that I've ever seen, and they were just full to ceiling of coffee sacks and thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And you know, every single coffee sack is a, is a kilo of jute fabric, and we realised at that point that single projects weren't going to make any significant difference. And what we needed was a, a macro systems change. So fast forward to 2015, my husband, who's Luke, no way back to there, and I were working on a um, <laughs> on a vast fibre project and living in Milan in New Zealand post approached us because I've been working on an upcycling project with the uh, uniforms, but realised that there were issues around waste and scale and market demand. So they brought us in to create this <coughs> macro system for used clothing within New Zealand. So we spent two years really researching what the issue was, what the scale of it was. We audited New Zealand textile consumption, New Zealand companies' textile consumption, like New Zealand, New Zealand Post, all these big companies. And then we developed a system, excuse me, <coughs> we developed a system to um, put particularly <coughs> corporate clothing into, into better use, because while, like New Zealand's, Clothing consumption is at about $5 billion a year. Corporate consumption is 40 times greater, not by price, but by volume. So there's kind of real <coughs> big hidden market there. Um, so that's where our focus is on, is on corporate textiles. Um, the program was launched last year by Minister Eugene Saint. And, um, and at this at the moment, what we're doing is developing a digital platform to actually track the material flows. Last year, we did a project with Wellington Zoo, taking the used uniforms and looking for avenues for them to be reused. Like zoo uniforms are really, really hard wearing; they have a lot of life still in them when they were decommissioned. So we found avenues for them for reuse within the community, and then taking the ones that weren't any good to be deconstructed and reused in, in other formats. Um, and we created a case study out of this and we were able to map the environmental impacts of doing that, how much carbon was consumed, how much water was consumed, etc. And then this case study was taken to the World Zoos and Aquariums Association and it's now been built into their global framework as best practices for zoos and aquariums worldwide. So it's amazing what you can do from just a tiny little Wellington office, the things that we have that, that we do that often seem not that significant can have a big ripple, ripple effect. Um, so, jumping quickly forward, um, so that this case, we use this case study, which is a manual case study, then to build the 
this blockchain digital platform so we can track material flows, we can start to build this market and this drawer for second hand materials and, and map it so we can, corporate companies can actually pull the information out, their data out of that and put it straight into their sustainability reporting. Um, what's happened in the last 12 months really interesting is that the, the whole economics of clothing has really, really changed. That the second hand resale market has outpaced the luxury market. So last year, second hand retail held, held, hit about $360 billion, whereas the luxury market was only something like $305. So now you've got, re, you've got these big luxury conglomerates like Louis Vuitton now investing in that reseller market. Because if we if we just wear our clothes and send them off to you know pop them in the charity bin so they get offshored into third world developing nations, we're not really using the full value of those garments. And if you think it takes you know three years of one person's drinking water to create a single t-shirt, it's on us to extract as much value as we can out of those garments. So it's really great to see you all here today because you're part of this change process and you know an understanding that we need to rewear our clothes and we we need to treasure them. We need to buy really good quality clothes and make really good quality clothes for start, buy really good quality clothes and then resell them and that will help us live within our planetary boundaries without you know without shooting away past them. So Thank you all for coming today. You're doing the good work and it's helping change the whole system. So, thank you.